Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Quick Trip Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139 State Representative Gary Hebel of Sun Prairie is a Democrat seeking re-election in the 46th Assembly District. Gary, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Steve. Good to be with you. Well, let's talk about this week. The governor asked for action on a special session on uh, his, his, uh, his policing reforms. That's not going to happen. I just want to double check. Do you support all of the governor's policing reforms? Absolutely, Steve. I think there are uh, items that are woefully overdue. We need to take care of these issues, and we need to do it in, as soon as possible. The uh, continued unrest in this state and this nation needs to be met with a, a reaction that's, that's positive, that brings us together, rather than dividing us. And uh, I think those proposals are a good start as to where we need to go. Frankly, it's interesting, Steve, but uh, in watching the video cams, I, I've, I've really become a proponent of uh, police officers having video cams. Uh, I think the reports that we see uh, do not always reflect what happens. And so it's amazing what, what those video cams show and uh, frankly, I think it's, it's uh, in fairness to the, to the victims and to the police that people have the opportunity to see what actually goes on. So I know the city of Madison uh, was poo-pooing it and I don't believe they have those. And I frankly think that our state should adopt a policy that police officers have video cams. It's What's a, it there's stake? a cost involved, but I think it's a necessary expense. What's at stake if there's no policing reforms at either the state or the national level, Gary? Well, I think it's uh, what it says is that that uh, folks are not willing to face the problem. I think uh, what we need to do is, is deal with this issue. I mean, based on what we've seen in these video cams and the incidents that are going on, there is systemic racism that that, that is occurring. And uh, we look at the prison population. Uh, blacks make up, I believe, seven percent of the population in Wisconsin, and I think there's an excess of forty percent of the prisoners in our state. Are black so there's there's some real major issues that need to be dealt with head on we can't ignore this any longer uh, we have to uh, treat all of our citizens equally fairly under the Constitution it says that well um, criminal justice reform should that include legalizing both medical and recreational marijuana you know uh, certainly medical marijuana there's absolutely no question about that any way we can make our our, our sick and uh, injured folks comfortable, we should make every effort we can to do that. Uh, uh, recreational marijuana, I think that's a little bit more of an open question. I know that there's states that have it, and frankly, it's created a ton of revenue for those states. But studies have shown that there's uh, some issues that have arisen as a result of legalized marijuana. I personally would want to study it further. If I had to vote today on it, I would say yes. but. I, I, I constantly change my impression of things based on what I learn. I'm a sponge for information and I don't make a decision today on a, a bill that's coming up six up months from now. I wanna know everything I can about it and so I make the best decision for my constituents. Gary, let's talk about the pandemic. First of all, you and I saw that uh, Monday report, tax collections for the fiscal year that ended June 30 were up about 1%, which is good news, but there's fear about tax collections in the current fiscal year. If we're a billion and a billion and a half short, raise taxes or cut spending? You know, that question is, uh, is really um, one that it, it, when you do the budget, you, you're looking at your priorities. What is most important to you as a representative for the citizens of the state? And so you have a certain finite dollar amount that you can spend. And that's what you look at. So in terms of raising taxes or cutting spending, it's not that simple. What we need to do is prioritize our spending and then make sure that there's adequate funds for that. Now, uh, I don't like the idea of raising taxes. Sometimes it has to be done. What I think we need to do, first of all, 
is make sure that our, our taxing policies are fair to all the individuals in the state, including corporations. And I think frankly, right now, some corporations and some wealthy individuals are getting a free ride at the state expense, or more importantly, at the middle class and the, uh, the lower class are paying for their fare. And I think right now we need to look at fair taxation. There's certain things that we can do in the budgetary process that we have failed to do. The Medicaid expansion is just a glaring example of $800 million that we left on the table that we could help so many areas of our budget if we would do that. The uh, uh, tax credit for manufacturing is something that, that we ought to look at adjusting because that's $300 million. 76% of that money went to millionaires and more. Uh, people have made more money than that. They don't need a tax break. Um, so uh, your question to summarize, would I raise taxes or would I cut spending? Uh, it's, it's, it's a combination. I need to see what items we're looking at and I wanna make sure that we spend our dollars as wisely as possible. I've always been a uh, fiscal conservative in terms of making sure that we only spend what we have and making sure that we have fairly tax those folks so that we get a, a good return on the money. State Senate Republicans would like to come back to the Capitol to overturn the governor's statewide mask mandate. Uh, do you support that mandate? Steve, I'm not a doctor. You're not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I have two nurses in my family. One of the best decisions I ever made was to marry a nurse. And of course, my daughter's a nurse at the, uh, uh, the uh, cancer center in Madison. So I've got great medical advice that monitors my behavior on it every day. Uh, the mask uh, mandate is something that medical professionals, Dr. Fauci and uh, Dr. Burks and others have recommended. So it clearly is something that, and you can see that it's having a positive benefit on reducing the number of uh, people who are, uh, come down with COVID uh, uh, symptoms. What's also interesting is that with the flu season coming up, these medical professionals are saying, because we're doing these precautions, the social distancing and wearing masks, we're gonna have a lower um, uh, outbreak of the flu season because of, of those precautions. So I think there's some really good things that are, are occurring there. And I, I just wish two things. I wish we had the testing that would tell you in, a, in an hour or two, whether you have it or not. And now the UW is working on exact sciences in Madison is, is working on those testing procedures. That's what we need is tests that, like the, with the, our president has that. He has a test that he knows within five minutes whether he's got the COVID or not. Every citizen should have that same ability because once we do that, then we can do the tracing. And once we do the tracing, we can, we can really nip this, uh, this uh, COVID uh, and take care of the problem. And that's how it's happened in the past. And that's how other countries have, have dealt with it. We have failed to do that. We have, um, we've seen how the role that hospitals are playing, Wisconsin and nationally, treating COVID patients. Uh, if you're reelected voting on the next state budget, should hospitals be an even greater priority than they might be in the current budget, Gary? Well, I gotta give, take my hat off to the first responders and to the, uh, to the healthcare providers. They are doing an awesome job. And frankly, I don't think we're giving them the support that they need. I, I think we really need to get them the protection and the, the, the medication, the, the, the uh, funding that they need to provide the services. I mean, they're putting their life on the line every day. So I'm supportive of that. But if you take the example of the Medicaid expansion, we could have provided much more money to hospitals. I mean, we got nursing homes and assisted living places that are closing because the Medicaid reimbursement is not enough to cover the, the basic costs that they have. So clearly funding for hospitals is, is a top priority. There is a balancing there though, Steve, because one of the things that we look at is who's making the money with regards to the healthcare providers? Is it, is it an independent medical body or is it just as it shareholders? Or is it other people that are making the money? Frankly, our, our healthcare system needs to be overhauled. When you spend the kind of dollars we spend and do not have the results, that we really should be, we should be number one because we spend more than any other country per person on medical care, but we're not number one in healthcare. And we need to, to make that, when you get the biggest bang for the buck and we need to spend the money wisely and we're not doing that. So 
our healthcare system needs to be overhauled. And frankly, I think that the, uh, the uh, uh, Affordable Care Act was a step in the right direction. And they're talking about reducing the age. Of, uh, talk to anybody on Medicare. I don't think you're old enough to be on Medicare, but if you were, Medicare people are very happy with the Medicare system. And I'm happy with the Medicare system. It's, it's not total pay, but it covers most of the costs. So Medicare type, a system like that, seems to be one that would really function well in our society. Now the Republicans have talked about getting rid of Obamacare and coming up with another solution. For 10 years they've been talking about it. We have no change in any, any proposal that they have. So your, to summarize your the answer to your question, yes, I support uh, uh, additional funding for hospitals and healthcare workers. Um, Senator Camping this week said, I've sponsored a bill if a business or, or, an, or, or, an, or an organization, excuse me, excuse me, follows COVID guidelines and protects its employers or customers, they could not be sued. Do we need a law like that, Mr. Attorney? Well, the um, Wisconsin has a, a law that provides penalty for frivolous claims. So if any attorney were to bring a frivolous claim, a, a lawsuit against a, a corporation, or an employer, and the case is frivolous, that attorney is subject to severe penalties, uh, not only the cost that they have, but uh, there's damages that they have to pay the other side for bringing a frivolous case. Uh, I'm, I, I like the idea of protecting our employers to make sure our workers go back to work, but I'm also concerned whenever you talk about immunity from prosecution, what you're saying is that someone can get away with negligent behavior, or uh, their intentional behavior, but because they're immune from it, they're not going to take the precautions necessary to protect their employees. And so I don't think that that broad brush approach of just saying you're immune from any prosecution if you follow the guidelines. If you follow them to a T, then anybody who brings a lawsuit against you, that's a frivolous lawsuit, and they should be subject to sanctions as a result of bringing that action. Let's talk about reapportionment. You support the governor's plan for a People's Maps Commission that would draw a plan and then forward it to lawmakers, right? Yes. Uh, the, consti the Constitution calls for uh, the legislature to bring forward a plan and to approve it. Since 1961, so that's, uh, well, let's see, that's uh, four or five, seven, six times we've had the legislature and the governor approve the, the, the reapportionment, redistricting, if you will. And there's been a couple of times when the Supreme Court has been had to get involved, but ultimately all the, the entities of government have agreed on it. I think we've come to a point now where we need to have fair, unbiased, non-political uh, uh, apportionment of the districts. Iowa has a decent system that I'd like to see incorporated here. When you have an election that has 250,000 more Democratic votes than Republican votes across the state, and you have a division in your assembly of two thirds, one third, and in the Senate, basically the same, there is something seriously wrong with that uh, process. We're, we're, we're under the under, under guise that one person, one vote. But if my vote is concentrated with the city of Milwaukee or city of Madison, concentrated with 90% of other Democrats, my vote is diluted as opposed to someone who's in a district 50-50. My vote means a lot more there and that's not the way it should be. So okay. yes, I'm in support of the governor's proposal and I think that should be done. Let's talk about property taxes, an issue that, uh, well, Wisconsin is a high property tax state. These property tax levy limits and caps that local governments have had to live with for 20 years, more than 20 years. Should they be continued? Well, I think local form of government is the best uh, source of taxing because they know what their, their communities need better than anybody. When we tie their hands, we've created a problem for them. We, this the state legislature and state government has really cut off the lifeblood for our cities towns, villages, and, uh, and uh, any entity of government. And we've tied their hands in terms of their ability to, to properly fund things. 
talk to any local, any local, like they've had to close city dumps or town dumps and uh, uh, other, other things because they don't have the money to do that. The town roads have been turning to gravel. The state has really cut off the ability for the locals to really fund the projects that they need. And even worse than that is funding education. There have been so many referenda in this state since, since we've not properly funded education. And those referenda are not for new buildings, they're for uh, lights and heat just to continue to keep the, the, uh, the schools functioning. So we need to properly fund our schools and it shouldn't be done by way of a referenda. So in summary, I do support the local's ability to, uh, to tax and determine what the uh, amount of tax should be for those types of things. So when we, I, I don't want, the caps I think should be loosened. Uh, and, and frankly, I don't think there's been a violation of any great degree prior to this time. And I think it's just the state wanting to take more control over local government. And I think that's, it should be the reverse of that. Governor, e excuse me, Governor Evers wanted to raise a gas tax last year. Um, are, are you willing to raise a gas tax to stabilize highway funding? Well, you know, there's a couple of things. One is that uh, we used to have indexing. You've been around long enough to know that there was an automatic uh, increase or change in taxes based on cost of living and, and inflation. That was a painless way for us to increase taxes. But our highways, our infrastructure in this state are in a sad, sad situation. We need to find a way to fund our highways, our roads, our bridges, because uh, we're facing a calamity that Minnesota faced on Interstate 35 a few years ago, and we need to take care of our roads. So we have to properly fund those. Is a gas tax one way to do it? It would help, it would help. But the bottom line is there's a, there's a huge gap there. And we've been bailing, not us, but the uh, Republican majority has been bailing on the responsibility of property fund, properly funding our infrastructure. And look at the jobs that that would create. Look at the, uh, the ability to make uh, increase our tourism, which is one of the most important elements in our state. Uh, we have to make sure our roads are are good for not only tourism, but for our citizens and for industry, because there's a ton of stuff that's that's transported and our roads have to be in good condition. Right now they're not. So I would be in support of looking at a, a gas tax increase. Uh, you look at uh, a lot of our, our visitors, are, we're paying for their use of the highway in a lot of ways because the gas tax does not fairly reflect the cost of the usage of that road. School districts and local governments, when they plan major public works projects, should they have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? There was a study that said in 2015, out-of-state contractors for public works projects got 72 million in contracts that more than doubled to 146 million by 2018. Should local governments have to give a preference to Wisconsin businesses? Sure, I think I think that's a, that's a smart thing to do. Uh, one of the our local businesses pay local taxes. Our construction companies pay, pay local taxes, so it makes sense that we we provide. Uh, it's just like when you go down the street and you shop at a local store, as opposed to going online. You're supporting the local economy. We should support the state economy by making sure that. I mean, if all things are equal, that's what we ought to do. But we had a, a situation here in Sun Prairie a couple of years ago where Corey Barr was, was killed in an explosion. We had auto straight contractors that come in and they're not, they're not obligated to follow the state law. We're, we've, we've made some changes in roads to try to protect our citizens from those kind of situations. And we passed legislation to do that. Not as much as I wanted to, but we got to start on that. But those kind of out of state contractors, they may be the low bidder, but you pay for what you get. And frankly, uh, uh, union jobs, union folks do a better job and they have uh, they, they provide a basis for the economy that we need to, to have. We got about a minute left. Quick summary of differences between you and your opponent on November 3, Gary. You know, I don't know uh, much about my opponent. All I can tell you is this, Steve, is I love the, the honor of representing the 46th Assembly District. I have worked as hard as I possibly could to do everything I can for the benefit of my, my citizens in the 46th Assembly District. It's truly an honor to do that. And uh, if I'm given the opportunity to continue in this, this position, again, I will continue to listen to my constituents and, and do everything I can for their benefit. 
State Representative Gary Hebel of Sun Prairie is a Democrat seeking re-election in the 46th Assembly District. Gary, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. You bet. Thank you. Stay safe, uh, safe Steve. Good time. Uh, well, here's, here's... Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association Quick Trip Wisconsin Counties Association Wisconsin Realtors Association and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.